Hi, can you hear me? Is that better? Oh, okay, good. Um, I'm so glad to be here this afternoon, and uh, I do want to recognize the um, Philadelphia Women's Support Group for being willing to do the groundwork to put this together. So are they here? Can you stand so that everybody can see who you are? that I hope many of you other women uh, would take two hours out of a weekday, Wednesday or Thursday uh, or Tuesday and come and see what they're about. And as I talk about uh, some of the aspects of melon today, I'll probably elucidate more into what it is that they're actually studying. I do just want to hold this book up, not just because I wrote it, but it kind of like is going to set the tone. Uh, more and more technology is coming forth today on many, many levels. Uh, we just saw a situation this weekend uh, with O.J. Simpson as to how just through the use of his cellular telephone that he was able to be picked up from satellite and located on the planet. And it's real important that we begin to understand what these technologies are, whether it is the use of laser, microwave, radio waves, TV waves, cosmic waves, ultraviolet light, et cetera, what this really is. And to my surprise and true thankfulness, I'm understanding that what I am seeing before my very eyes is an externalization, an external manifestation of my own innate gifts and talents. Yes, it's very important for you to begin to understand that melanin is the complete composite of all forms of light, known and unknown to us. Now, I just want you to think about that for a minute, because when you are actually looking into the blackness, the bleakness, whether that's into your face, whether that's into a dark room, whether that's actually looking up at the sky, you are actually looking at all forms of light. Really, for the best thing I can describe to you, you are really looking into the face of the Creator. Now, if we want to go back as far as Egyptian times, I think one of the most controversial pharaohs, <coughs> excuse me, uh, at Nathan or Conaton, depends on how you pronounce that, was known as the pharaoh of the sun. And the uh, interpretations by Lubowitz and other uh, hieroglyphic or Egyptian historians really were not able to truly translate why this particular pharaoh and his entire dynasty was quite focused on the sun and sun worshiping. It wasn't as though they were actually just worshiping an object that they happened to have chosen within their environment, but the understanding of recognizing that this was a greater emanation of oneself. That's what actualizing and honoring the sun was about, recognizing that not only does the sun shine in the daytime, but also at nighttime, because what you are seeing is a greater manifestation of more forms of light at night than in the day. Now, let's just look at that. I don't know how member, many of you had basic, uh, how can I describe that, uh, color Ident identification in first, second, third grade, et cetera. They asked you to name three primary colors, and then you had to name their complementary colors, and they had you mix them together and paint, and you had to explain what you were seeing. How did you make yellow? How did you make blue? How did you get purple, brown, et cetera? But the key here is, is that it's very important to understand that where there is no light or very little light reflects itself as being pale or white. And when there is intense color of a deep, deep intensity, it always manifests itself as being darkened or actually black. Now, what am I saying then when we're actually talking about the substance known as melanin? Let me just give you a little history here. Uh, there's so much information on this, and the more I review this, the more work I realize is available for me. I'm not gonna bother us with a lot of the scientific data because I want you to leave here today with a clear understanding of when you look at your face, when you're washing your skin, when you're happen happening to look down at 
a uh, black shoe, and I happen to like black patent leather shoes a lot, and it's a real scientific reason why. There, there was a play that came out that uh, patent leather shoes, black patent leather shoes always reflect up, and at the end of this lecture, I hope you begin to understand why, because it's actually the front and back are double intensity of the full electromagnetic spectrum of light. Okay, so to your surprise, I think that you should begin to recognize that Again, on a written scientific basis, melanin began to be studied as early as 1658. It was interesting that this gentleman by the name of Leture, a French gentleman, found it. It was very interesting to note that in certain animals, whether they're frogs or they were cockroaches, etc., that they had this substance known as what they call a basic pigment that allowed them to have particular colors. In 1737, there was a gentleman by the name of Albinus who recognized and was able to identify that this particular pigment had specific characteristics and was interested in finding out where it originated from. Now, it was interesting that his name being spelled A-L-B-I-N-U-S, Albinus, had been coined also as the precursor to a particular disease where this pigment was not present, or albinism. Now, in the United States, one of the foremost gentlemen in pigmentation research, his name is known as John Mitchell, and he's located at Harvard University. And there is a whole center there at Harvard University and has been there for the last 40 years that does nothing but research on pigmentation and all of its aspects. Now, in 1826, there's a gentleman by the name of Lenek who was able to describe that this pigmentation was contained in a cellular structure known as a melanocyte in little granular forms known as melanosomes and that these tissues could undergo abnormal functioning to produce what now is known as melanoma or cancer. In 1987, there was a journal that scientists have put together known as the Journal of Pigment Cell Research that has been in publication and that is produced every month on cells of pigment. How many of you are subscribers? How many of you have any idea that there is a medical journal that's put out every month on your pigment? Do you have any idea what's in it? Fine. It's interesting that out of all the cells studied in the body, the most important and the most common cell studied is the red blood cell. Next to that, or second, is the nerve cell or the neuron. And then thirdly is the melanocyte. Now, I think it's very interesting that at least on the news and in the newspaper,